Hello, in this session we will talk about symmetric and asymmetric encryption, including the concepts of public and private keys. This is Hassan Mir from Zero2ProTraining.com. The basic types of encryptions are as follows, symmetric and asymmetric. So we will talk about symmetric encryption first. This was the only method available in the old days, but now we have asymmetric method available as well. But it's not that asymmetric has replaced symmetric in all the cases. There are situations where symmetric encryption is required and there are situations where asymmetric is used. So let's take a look at both these methods. So here is a situation. This is a sender. This is the receiver. Sender wants to send an email to the receiver and we have a hacker. Hacker will try to hack the communication. So if sender sends an email without any encryption, this hacker can get hold of the message and this will defeat the whole purpose. To solve the problem, the sender came up with a technique. He locked the email using a password. Now nobody can read this email until the person has password. So this is a symmetric encryption. Email has been encrypted and it could be decrypted using the same password that was used to encrypt it. Okay, so now the locked email has arrived to the receiver but we have an issue. Receiver doesn't have the password yet and this email could only be unlocked or decrypt using the password. So if the sender sends the password using the same media, the internet, the hacker can hack the password and hacker can hack the email. So hacker will have email and the password and this will defeat the whole purpose. So wherever we have two endpoints in the communication, symmetric encryption is not the best way. And this was used in the past for the communication between two endpoints and uh, we had issues so asymmetric communication was the answer. In symmetric encryption as you have seen the same key is used to encrypt the data and the very same key will be used to decrypt the data and that key is used uh, in this context is called private key or secret key. So the usage of symmetric encryption is when you are securing a resting data okay for example when you are putting a data in the database and you want to protect it symmetric encryption is the answer and not only that let's say you are storing your tapes backup tapes to a storage location you might want to encrypt the data using symmetric encryption so what is common in all these scenarios two endpoints are not there. You're storing the data and you want to protect it. Now let's talk about asymmetric encryption also known as public private key encryption. So we have the same scenario again. We have a sender, we have a receiver and sender is sending a message to the receiver and we have a hacker who is trying to hack the message. The receiver has created two keys public and private. Public key has been given to the public either through the website or through any other media it is accessible to everybody including the hacker. So that is number one point you need to know a public key is accessible to everybody. Now the second thing you need to understand is that public key can only be used to encrypt the information and private key will be used to decrypt the information. So any message that is encrypted using the public key could only be decrypted using the private key. Actually the other way around is also possible but the implementation of the security is using this way that public key is used to encrypt the information and private key is used to decrypt the information. So anybody can send encrypted information to the receiver using his public key but nobody will be able to decrypt it other than the receiver. Nobody has the private key. Even hacker doesn't have the private key. So he can hack the email which is locked. He will not be able to decrypt it. So once the email arrives to the receiver 
it is locked and he will decrypt it using the private key problem solved. Asymmetric encryption or public private key encryption is commonly used wherever we have two endpoints. A message is going from one point to the other and somebody at point one is encrypting the message and someone else at point two will have to decrypt it. This someone else could be a human or software obviously as well. Here are common examples all consisting of two endpoints. We have asymmetric encryption between browser and web server, between VPN client and VPN server, between SSH client and SSH server or secure FTP client and secure FTP servers. The benefits of asymmetric comes with a cost of performance. Symmetric encryption is very very fast, multiple times faster than asymmetric so that is why symmetric encryption is used wherever asymmetric is not required, wherever we do not have two endpoints. So keep that in mind, asymmetric is used whenever security is more important than compromise in the performance.